due to dramatic, exciting, but sadly undocumented events involving tax evasion, romance, triple crossings, arson, and mutated karate platypuses from outer space, the following episode had to be filmed in California. We apologize for the inconvenience. Hello, children. Are you ready for the story? <laughs> alright, alright, settle down. This is the story of the story of the cat in the hat. There once was a boy who just learned to read, and he found himself needing what all who read need. A book, indeed. So he searched for a book in which he could look, and if he liked it, he took the book. But oh no, the boy looked, he looked low, he looked high. There's no book here I like, he said with a sigh. But then he saw a small little book on the low bottom shelf, and he spoke. This book is going to be for myself. The little boy read this book both day and in bed. And indeed, it was one of the first books he read. A couple years later, and the boy had grown taller. Taller, that is, than when he was smaller. He saw that a movie was to appear, oh what joy, of the story that taught him to read as a boy. But you see, my dear children, this film about this cat is not filled with laughter, but rather with scat! It's an insult to comedy and the good nature of man. It should crawl back into the hole where it began. It is poison to the eyes, to the soul and the mind. In short, it's a tragedy to all mankind. So come, let us see why this film is not fun. And I'm not gonna do the whole rhyming shtick because it's already been done. Wait. So the movie opens up rather promisingly. The imagery in the intro actually looks like a Dr. Seuss book. Heck, they even put a little top hat on the DreamWorks boy, that's cute. There are gajillions of stories of mischief and fun. But to keep things simple, let's start with just one. And there's a rhyming narrator? Wow, this movie is starting to look pretty good after all. That city is Anvil. And my retinas just exploded. Good God, what is up with that set? It looks like someone just glued random objects on top of a miniature village. And where does our magical and whimsical story begin? In the spotless real estate office run by Hank Humberflug. Real estate. The wondrous world of Dr. Seuss's cheery creation opens up with Real estate. I'm bored already! The mother, played by Kelly Preston, has to prepare a party for her boss, for some reason. By the way, her boss is something else. Fired. Did I? Now you may be asking, why? Why would they even put such an abominable character into such an innocent story? Oh, <laughs> you've seen nothing yet. If your house is as messy as last time... You're fired! Cut to the house, where the boy in this version named Conrad, played by Spencer Breslin, and the girl, called Sally, played by Dakota Fanning, are doing their thing. We quickly get to see how much effort was put into giving these two characters a personality. And by effort, I mean no effort. As it turns out, she is a dull control freak and he is a careless rascal. He 
probably got brain damage from that, but that would be implying that he actually has a brain. I tried to tell him, Mom. Mom's throwing a very important party, I said. All of her important clients will be here. Yeah. As you'll notice, the child actors in this movie show about as much emotion as a rock. Hell, I know rocks that emote more. Performance of a lifetime. Enter everyone's favorite sparkling train conductor, Alec Baldwin. Sparkle, sparkle, sparkle. He is a bootlicking jackass who wants Conrad to be sent to military school to straighten him out. But enough of him and his karate moves. Because the mom has to go back to work, so she has to get a babysitter. <laughs> My god, it's like Jabba the Hutt tried on his grandmother's makeup. Maybe if you just behave, I wouldn't have to consider military school. I wish I could trust you. I wish I had a different mom. Well, sometimes I wish the same thing. You wish you had a different mom? Now, here's one of the many, many problems of the movie. There is little to no love in this family. I mean... Of course, every family gets into fights now and then, and yes, sometimes families get into really tight spots, but Jesus! On the one hand, there is showing a loving family getting into each other's hair, and then there's outright hate being flung at each other like boiling bile! Speaking of unneeded hate, there's a scene about Taiwanese politics. Parliament. That joke was so child-oriented that I don't even get it. And apparently the babysitter is narcoleptic. Um, ain't that a little backwards? Like having a Parkinson's patient doing brain surgery? Or entering a catatonic into a dance-off? You should have seen the look on your face. It was like you saw a monster. A monster? Where? That could have gone better. Damn right it could have! And here we see Mike Myers playing the cat in the hat. Or as I like to call it, the most horrifying thing I have ever seen since I discovered what tripophobia is. Don't look that up. And he is about as funny as skin cancer. Would you like some... Milk? Milk? Ugh, no! Lactose intolerant, gums up the works. Oi, you'll thank me later. <laughs> Another thing you'll notice, other than the nightmarish costume design, is that he tends to always laugh at his own jokes. Yeah, although those drapes are a train wreck. <laughs> UK, this woman, to sit on babies? I'd do it for nothing. <laughs> Listen, kid, you can tap it with a hammer. It ain't gonna change. And we all know that does not work out well, do we? <laughs> I'm going to stop now. The sad thing about that is that even if a joke has the potential to be funny, the reactions to it just ruin it before it can even get a laugh. So what do we do? Well, there are two treatments I'd recommend. One is a series of painful shots injected into your abdomen and kneecaps. And the other involves a musical number. Me, 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 oh! How many shots? <laughs> so there's a musical number. Of course there is. That directly quotes the book. I know it is wet and the sun is not sunny, but we can have lots of good fun. That is. That's kind of cool. I mean, it's wait, wait a second. It's funny. The one moment they quote the book, and this. Is their reaction? Really? Really?
Really? Really? How freaking dare you spit on Seuss's words like that, you wretch! Why would you do that? What? What? What are you? You know what? Let's try to find out. Let us watch this movie and try to deduce what kind of person would manufacture something so heinous as this godforsaken mess. I mean, maybe it was just someone who is a child at heart, who doesn't know any better. Someone who didn't really understand how to make this film work for the best. Which would also explain the childish humor, um, but no, no, that can't be true. I mean, how else would they fit all those adult jokes in there? No, 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 that doesn't work. Well, I'm sure we can find an answer if we just keep watching. As much as I hate doing that. I know lots of good tricks. And I'll stop this right now! Uh -huh. Who said that? Me! Remember the fish? Ah, right! The fish! The character from this bit and... Yeah, that's it. Ain't it kind of scary that we have seen more of the OCD-riddled boss and the racially insensitive neighbor rather than this character that actually did appear in the original book? In all seriousness, the fish doesn't even appear in the film that much. He doesn't even make that much of a difference. You could cut him out of every scene he's in and it wouldn't change a single thing. Actually, I think they wrote the script and only then remembered that there was a fish in the story to begin with. And done! I printed the script. Go over there and get it for me. Uh... Wasn't there a goldfish in the original story? Uh, a what? Uh, what's a gold? What a goldfish? A, uh, a what? The the goldfish from the book. The, the goldfish in the bowl. Ah, uh, uh, I didn't even read the book. We we could just throw that in later. It's fine. It it, it doesn't matter. Uh, uh. Now it's perfect. I hate working with you. Shut up and give me a coffee. Oh my god, no! There was this cat I knew oh my sweet I merciful I god, no! Oh hey look, they're recreating the scene from the book. I bet there's no way they can ruin such a nice and cute scene. Oh, of course. My childhood is currently in the ICU thanks to this movie. There's something I want to show you. Something magical and full of wonder. <laughs> oh no. It's called a contract. Oh no, it's even worse than I thought! Who are they? Magical time traveling elves. <laughs> yeah, magic. <laughs> okay, they're my lawyers. Ah, isn't this world magical and whimsical? Isn't the character of the cat not a lovable rascal with his breaking and entering, assaulting children and having minors sign a contract without consent of their parents? Isn't it utterly delightful how he imitates an extremely offensive redneck and shows off his butt? How does that even... Forget I asked. This is amazing! I'm being in the circus! Yeah, but without those tortured animals or drunken clowns, I'd have hepatitis! Ah, come on! Not only did you have to ruin the book for the kids, you also had to go and ruin circuses for them as well? What else do you want to destroy from their innocent minds? Dad, I want to be an artist when I grow up. Well, you're probably not going to find a job with that. Dad, I want to help the school by planting flowers. No, growing flowers is for women, and I will not have my son be seen as some kind of pansy. Dad, I 
want to change the world to be better. The world is cruel and egocentric, and anyone who tries to change it will be crushed within the wheels of defeat. <laughs> Shut up and eat your gruel. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret, okay? Nobody likes a suck up! Said the suck up. And then he does this because he's cold, I guess? And then he gets allergies from the cat's hair, and then he leaves. Because that moment was worth it. Here's another thing. For as often as the cat mentions that he wants to have fun, he doesn't really let the kids have much fun. I mean, take this scene for example. The girl clearly says that she wants to make cupcakes. I want to make cupcakes! What does the cat do? Of course! Sit the kids into a TV audience so they can watch duplicates of himself make cupcakes. What? Boy, way to let the kids have their fun, eh? I mean, don't these cupcakes look scrumptious, filled with purple Nickelodeon gack? Mmm, delightful. But at least this scene gives us the best line in the entire movie. That's impossible! You're not just wrong, you're stupid. <laughs> hey, this applies to the makers of the movie too. I mean, if you look really closely, you can see Mike Myers pointing at the director. Um, cat, your tail. What about it? Oh, I see. I've chopped it off. Well, that's interesting because... Son of a b Did... Did I just watch... The Cat and the Hat... Yell... Son of a bitch... In front... Of children. Excuse me for a moment. <laughs> I don't want to do this anymore! I don't want to be the reason why! Oh my god, why? <laughs> so the oven explodes, sending purple goop all over the kitchen. Of course, now the cat will realize that he has made a complete mess of the place and that he should clean it up, right? Actually, no! He just makes the situation worse. Instead of using, oh, I don't know, a rag, he uses the one dress that the mother did not want dirty. Because life is harsh and cruel. For the kids. And now we meet Thing 1 and Thing 2, who look like someone electrocuted Marge Simpson's midget clones. But enough of those totally new characters! Comrad wants to take a look into the crate, but the cat doesn't allow it. Now, I'm not usually a rules guy, but this is a biggie. No opening the crate. No looky, no touchy. Got it? Ah, so he's also a hypocrite! Let's add that to the list of things that make him insufferable. This isn't just any old crate, it's the trans-dimensional transporter later. It's kind of like a doorway which leads from this world to my world. And apparently the cat is from a different dimension? That is just... stupid. Not only does it destroy any sense of magic and wonderment that could have possibly been included, but also... Hello? The fish? He's talking, he's abnormal too, for lack of a better word. So is he from a different dimension as well? Well? But of course this movie isn't going to explain that, because this movie does not give a damn about anything. Back to these two freaks of nature. Are they as annoying as they are shown in the book? Nope! They are far worse. Instead of flying kites inside the house, you know, something that is fun! They just wreck it. For the lols. 
I went there. Naturally, the cat does not care about anything or anyone, except when someone breaks the rules he made himself. Any idea what happened to the lock on this crate? It's on Nevins' collar. Nevins? Oh, I don't know if this helps, but the things always do the opposite of what you say. Why did they only do the opposite? That's so annoying. Why do they always do the opposite? That's so annoying. Remind you of anyone, Conrad? Are you serious? That's the way you're gonna hammer that moral in? By literally having the things do the opposite of what you say? The kid never spited his mother on purpose, he just disregarded what she told him. Now, of course, that's not okay at all, but it's still better than being nasty for the sake of being nasty. The dog escapes with the lock on his collar, and the box won't stay shut without it. That seems like a serious design flaw. We cut to Alec Baldwin's, where it turns out that Alec Baldwin really is Alec Baldwin. Huh. All right, Nevins. Oh. Time to die. Cat, you scared him away. <gasps> Dirty hoe. I'm sorry, baby. I love you. Come on, Cat. Dirty... Oh. That scene just... needed that moment, didn't it? It wouldn't have been complete without it, would it? Do you really think that this is an appropriate joke for children? That there is no double meaning or subtlety or anything? You know what? I think I know what you are. You are nothing but a madman. A, a twisted little nut with a really warped sense of humor. Who somehow found his way out of the mental institution and somehow got people to rally behind him. But no. I mean, let's think about it. People did rally behind this movie. Actually put their time and effort into it. Not to mention the money. No, no. You must be something else. Anyway, on with the movie. They stumble onto a birthday party, where suddenly the kids storm out and the cat disguises himself as a piñata. And what follows is undoubtedly the best scene in the entire film. I'm not even kidding. This scene is so satisfying and also manages to even be kind of funny. So I present to you this scene with no edits whatsoever. Please enjoy. Step out of my way. This cannot end well. was awesome. Not only did we finally get to see this hairball of horror get his comeuppance by being slugged in the groin so hard that he freaking hallucinates, but also I thought it was funny. The hallucination is so weird, such a non sequitur, that it just gets a chuckle out of me. But sadly, the movie can't just end on a high note, so let's continue. Conrad distracts the kids by throwing candy at them, so logically they all ignore the screaming anthropomorphic cat and all throw themselves on the candy like zombies. <laughs> Oh. 
Up, up. Let's add that to the list. Baldwin gets his hands on the dog, so they decide to follow in the cat's car. Here she is, the super luxurious omnidirectional watchamajigger, or SLOW for short. SLOW? Yeah, slow. It's better than the last name we had. Super hydraulic instantaneous transporter. Oh, you mean it. No! Quick to the slow! <laughs> Get it? It's funny because it's rude! Considering that the thing is designed like a rocket ship had a kid with a candy cane, it goes at the speed of molasses in Alaska. And the scene is just as exciting, too. And so the cat effectively wrecks his own car. I wish I could say that I care as little as he does, but I really don't. The cat poses as a Rastafari hippie? And tries to coax Baldwin into giving him the dog. Did you hold my dog? Okay, I have a problem with the word dog. I don't use the D word per se, because I think it's really, really wrong. Yeah. But I will happily hold your canine American. Yeah. That was unbelievably racist, and I don't even know towards whom. Congratulations, I don't even know how you did that. They escape Baldwin by fleeing into a underground dance party? Where... Everyone is wearing striped top hats with 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 Paris Hilton. You, you, you know what? I, I I think the movie just gave up. Gave up. It, it just gave up. I mean, I don't even know how, why, or how the makers of this detestable disgrace got this idea in their raisin-like shriveled-up minds. But, who cares? I, I don't care. Totally. I, um, so, since the movie just gave up, why shouldn't I give up? I, so, instead of indulging my uh, long-running and patient fans and, and uh, the, the, the expecting new-coming viewers, I'm just gonna sit here and uh, scream the names of fruit at the top of my lungs. Why not? So let's get started. Apples, oranges, pears, bananas, papaya, pomelo. this with no further sedations <laughs> so they get the lock but the cat has mixed up his hat that gives him his magic powers is is, is that why there were so many top hats in that scene I'm good we're doomed we're dead this is all my fault. No, it's not. It's the fault of the giant flea basket sitting next to you. Wait a second, that's it, the opposite. Hey, things, don't help us. Do not show up and help us get home right now. How'd you get so smart? Certainly didn't learn it from you, you numb nugget. Now get inside. They arrive at the house and find that everything is pretty much in order. Why am I sneezing? That'd 
be me. Boom! <laughs> and murder! You're hanging out with a murderer, kids. So the house is a junkie's fever dream, and the cat still cares about nothing else than cracking bad jokes and laughing at them. You mean like at Universal Studios? <laughs> <laughs> I have figured it out. I have figured out what you are. You are a leech. A blood sucking parasite, clinging at the vein of something far greater and more worthy of praise than you have ever imagined. And just like the sponge you are, all you do is take and take, without giving anything of beauty or value in return. All you intend to do is devour. And what is it you crave? It's so simple. Money. All you want is money. You followed every single tire trope, every insipid idea, the sole reason why you made a movie based on the cat in the hat is so you could hit the lowest common denominator, so you could rake in more green. There is no art in this, no beauty, no value. There is just nothing worth experiencing. And, you know, <laughs> judging by the fact that you put 109 million dollars into this, that could easily have gone to a more worthy cause, This is the only conclusion I can come to. And I'm not wrong. Am I? So anyway, after a surprisingly extreme scene of them closing the crate, everything goes back to normal. Until the house caves in just like my soul after seeing this movie. The cat's reaction to this... Just observe. I did it! I did it! I did it! I did it! It's a complete disaster! Well, what are you gonna do? Tennis, anyone? <laughs> your hat! It's magic again! You had your real hat this whole time? Uh, yep. I planned the whole day. <laughs> so the cat orchestrated this entire mess. Which actually explains why he did not give a crap. This entire movie was just an unnecessarily cruel and might I add wholly sickening plan to get the kids to learn their lesson. The main character has just been exposed to be a complete and utter asshole and you know what? 
I saw this coming. And thankfully, Comrade finally grows some common sense and throws the cat out. Look around, cat. You were right. It's fun to have fun, but you have to know how. And you don't know when enough is enough. Now go! Susie. Cromwell. Please. Ow! Yes! Yes! <laughs> I don't care about the sad music in the background. This is the happiest moment of my life. <laughs> Look, Mom will be home any second. Why don't you go upstairs? I'm not going upstairs. I'm staying with you. Really? Why? Two reasons. One, the stairs are destroyed. And the humor is picking up now, too. Oh my god, the cat leaving really is the best thing that happened in this movie. Never thought I'd have another song to sing. And he's singing! Lesson, no! So the cat fixes the house, not because he's apologetic or likable or anything, but rather because of some kind of contract bullcrap, and really, who cares? This movie is almost over, I just want my pain to end. Please, someone end my pain! Isn't it interesting how the entire moral of the original story has been subverted by now? The book's moral was that one can bend the rules from time to time as long as it doesn't escalate. But in this movie, it is nothing but escalation! The mom's back, and hey, Alec Baldwin is alive too. Oh goody. Looks like everything turned out for the best, right? You know, except for the massive mental scarring edged into my psyche. And so, we can finally end this movie with a little bit of rhyming narration. The family was whole, all thanks to the cat, who was dashing and charming, no doubt about that. He was witty and cultured, and, well, very endearing. I guess I don't have to see any more of that goddamn cat- OH JESUS, NO! And so, we finally end this movie on, with- Oh, come on, shut up! There. I'm through. I'm done. I'm done. I have finished this heinous thing. And you know what? No exaggeration. This was the worst movie I've ever seen. It's unfunny, it's creepy, it's offensive, it's stylish, tasteless, and shameless. It has no finesse, no heart, no brains, no courage, and it abuses the very thing it is based upon to a point where it becomes unrecognizable. The titular character is both extremely annoying as well as surprisingly lacking in character. The kids are cardboard cutouts of cardboard cutouts, the set design looks like it's made of plastic, and overall, it's just a harrowing experience. The only thing that is genuinely good that this movie has done for us is this. According to Wikipedia, after the movie's release, Dr. Seuss's widow, Audrey Geisel, said that she would never allow any more live-action Dr. Seuss adaptations to be made. And I cannot thank her enough for that. Because this movie has literally broken my heart. Did, did you guys hear that? I, what was... Really? literally broken my heart. We're gonna end this with a pun? I mean, seriously, who writes this bullshit? Hi there! I'm here to tell you about all of the stuff you probably already knew about. So, if you liked this video, please click the button that says like on it. If you want to share this video with your friends, please share it with your friends. If you want to check me out on Facebook, please check me out on Facebook. And if you want to subscribe and see more of my videos in the future, please subscribe to see more of my videos in the future. Oh yes, and you might want to click one of my videos, if you want to click one of my videos. Captain Obvious, away!